No sign shall be given but the sign of Jonah. Matthew twelve thirty eight through 42 Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and indeed a greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south will will rise up and <coughs> excuse me, will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and indeed a greater than Solomon is here. When the Pharisees asked for a sign, they wanted a miraculous sign, some miracle that would prove that Jesus is a Savior, Son of God. Now, in the sign of Jonah, the emphasis is not on the miraculous nature of the sign, but the fact that we were able to see it. A sign is something that you can see with your own eyes and which conveys a message. For example, in Luke 2.12, in the Christmas story, an angel said to the shepherds, This will be a sign for you. The angel was not talking about a miracle. The sign will be that the baby is wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. When they see that, the shepherds will know that the baby is the Savior. The word sign is used with a negative connotation in Matthew 26, where Judas said to the betrayers, I will give you a sign. I will kiss him on the face and that will tell you that he is the one you have to arrest. Judas was not saying he was going to perform a miracle. He said that he was going to do something that they could see and that was kissing Jesus. So we find that the scribes and Pharisees said to Jesus, give us a sign that we can see that would prove what you claim to be in Jesus said to the evil an adulterous generation, no sign will be given except the sign of Jonah. So when Jesus says this generation, which generation is he talking about? Is he just talking about the whole generation of the Jews? I mean, if that is the case, does it mean that only the people in the Jesus day would receive the sign of Jonah about future generations? First of all, We have to understand that the word generation, as Jesus uses it, does not have the same meaning as the way we use it in English. In the English, generation refers to a particular group of people belonging to the same period of time. Okay? Now, in Psalm 14.5, it speaks about the generation of the righteous, the class of people who are described as righteous. So this means that when Jesus speaks about this generation, he's not just referring to the Jews. He is talking to the whole class of people who are wicked. Therefore, the sign of Jonah is not only for those standing in front of Jesus, but it is for anyone in this present age in which we live. We also have the sign of the resurrection. Here it says that Jonah is the sign. No sign will be given to accept the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The point of comparison is between Jonah and the Son of Man. You know, like between the Ninevites, this generation, Jonah was the sign to the people of Nineveh. In the same way that the Son of Man is the sign to us in this present age. But how is Jesus, the Son of Man, assigned to us? We saw that a sign must be something that we can see. It is not just a message. So how can Jesus be assigned to this age if we don't see him? Well, the resurrection. Jesus, he he said he would be buried for three days and three nights and he will rise again from the dead. 
Is the resurrection the sign that Jesus is talking about? How can the resurrection be a sign to us since we do not see the resurrection? If a miracle is performed in front of you, then that miracle can serve as a sign. But who has seen the resurrection? So how can the resurrection of Jesus be a sign? Moreover, if the resurrection is a sign, then the Lord Jesus gave that sign before. Remember in Lazarus, he raised him from the dead in front of many people. And another occasion, he raised the daughter of Jairus. She was dead, but she returned to life. <clears throat> many people were able to see that sign. Okay. So as far as Jesus' resurrection, they did not see it. Remember that Jesus was not talking about the disciples. He was talking about an evil generation, those who do not believe in him. So the disciples did see Jesus after his resurrection, but the evil and adulterous generation never saw him. So what about this generation, you guys? The one that's here now and the evil ones. So let's compare Jonah <clears throat> with Jesus. We can compare Jonah with Jesus because we seem to, it's just like comparing white with black. Jonah was the prophet of the OT who ran away from God after he was called to preach. Jonah was angry because they did not repent. He was not happy with the result of his preaching because they were a wicked nation. So what is the comparison? How is Jonah a sign? How is Jesus going to serve as a sign? Matthew 12, 40 and Luke eleven thirty are parallel to each other. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. For as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so also the Son of Man will be to this generation. He became a sign. When he spent three days and three nights inside the fish. Okay. Now let's go to the son of man. By the term of son of man. Notice that he didn't just say I will be a sign. He said the son of man will be a sign. When you read the book of Daniel. You will be able to make this observation. You will notice that the title sometimes refers to one person. Sometimes it refers to many people. So this is where the mystery is. We have a simu similar situation in the New Testament with Jesus teaching on the vine. Okay. So how is Jesus present in the world today? In his body? And we are that body, right? The church is the body of Christ. The indwelling of Jesus in his people is often expressed by Paul with the expression Christ in you. So this is what the church is about. Christ in you. Christ dwells in you. So if the Lord Jesus is the head, then we are the body. I can see your body and I can say that I see you. Even if I only see your hand, I still see you. Therefore, when people see the church, who do they see? They see Jesus. Now, when we begin to see the meaning of the sign of Jonah, the Lord is telling us something wonderful. He says, he says, sorry, you guys, about my voice. I am going to give you a sign, and that sign will be the expression of the power of the resurrection. The power of the resurrection did not just raise Jesus from the dead 2,000 years ago. The power of the resurrection is here and now operating in the world. As a Christian, we experience that because we never cease to know his power. We see changed lives because as soon as we as soon as we receive Jesus as Savior, what happens? Our lives are changed and people can see that in our lives. Now, what did the Lord Jesus promise to this generation? The sign of Jonah is the sign of the resurrection. It is a sign of changed lives. That is where you become a completely new person. Okay? We begin to see the beauty of the sign of Jonah. The sign of Jonah is the sign of the Son of Man, which is the sign of the church. 
Now there's another point. Jonah was literally baptized in water and rose to a new life. When he was in the fish, he offered thanksgiving for his deliverance from drowning and finally accepted to be used by God. So when we are baptized like Jonah, we go through the depth of the water. And what do we do? We rise up to a new life. Okay. And like Jonah, it is not the physical baptism that made the difference. It was a spiritual change in Jonah's heart. And the same for us. It's a spiritual transformation. Okay. That is the point. When we talk about the power of the resurrection, we become dead to the world to sin and we become alive to God. Jonah died to the world when he was in the belly of the fish. As far as the world was concerned, he was buried under the water. But he became alive to God. He offered thanksgiving for deliverance from drowning. And he was ready to preach repentance to the city of Nineveh. So therefore, he became a sign to the Ninevites. Same with us. We are Christians. We have, we have that spiritual change. We die to the world and to our sins. We become, we become alive to God. This is the resurrection. This is the consequence of becoming that new person. We become a sign to the generation. From now on, you and I, everyone who is truly a Christian, we are the sign that the world can see. Okay? So people see Jesus through you and me. We are the church. Are the, we are the sign of Jonah to this evil and adulterous generation. So if you are not a Christian you, and you have only heard about the resurrection, I would encourage you to not just listen to it, but to experience the power in your life. Okay? I believe, this is my own opinion here, this resurrection has everything to do with the rapture. Okay? And the sign of Jonah, I believe, has to do with the power that rises up within us. The power that we will have when our body is transformed. It's a transformation. So when we read the book of Jonah, we are not just reading about a story, like about Jonah. The story tells us about something that you can experience personally. So you yourself can know God in the power of his resurrection. The God who saved Jonah out of the belly of the well can save you. He is the power. His power is at work today in this world. And the sign of Jonah will prove the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. It won't be long now before the church is raptured. And when we are raptured, we will be transformed and we will experience that new wine just like um, my friend was talking about and and I'm, I'm going to put Mary's video on after this so you will be able to hear what she has to say it's a, it's not too long and um she's she's trying to make it very understandable for you so I know a lot of you have um wondered about not being able to understand it so I hope you enjoy this these um these videos put together and tonight before you go to sleep and you're praying to the Lord. Ask him to reveal to you the power of that resurrection and what it really meant. And, the, and how Jonah is a sign to us. He's a sign to this generation. We are that chosen generation. That is so exciting, you guys. I'm so excited. And I hope you enjoy it. And I love you guys. God bless you all. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey guys. Um, today is March 28th. Well, now it's the 29th. Um, I wanted to run by a few things that I've been working on. Um, I got a lot, a lot of stuff. But I'm going to break it down in layman's terms and stuff terms since a lot of people can't understand what I say because I speak fast and I'm very sorry about that. Um, so uh, first off I want you to take everything that which I say and put it into prayer and I want to especially thank Carly Smith, an amazing sister in Christ who has been there for me 
and has helped me, you know, with a lot of my studies as well as John Boucher. Um, and I'm just so blessed and, and Cindy Ann and just all of them. I'm so grateful. So, um, I just, uh, want to start off in prayer. So God, I just ask and pray as I come before you humbling myself that you will guide the words of my mouth, the words of my heart, the words of my mind, the words of my soul. Um, keep me father God from, um, leading anyone astray, whether it be unintentional, Lord Jesus, or, or whatever may come our way, keep distractions away. Father God, may everything I say and do be pleasing to you. And I just pray for all those who's listening, God, that you will open up their ears and open up their eyes. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, so where I want to start off is right here. In Genesis 7, 1, it says, Then the Lord said, okay, which is said means he, you know, like I'm talking, to Noah, come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Okay? Now, um, if you go to Genesis uh, 8, 13, it says um, that on the first day of the first month, okay, the waters dried up and Noah removed the covering um, of the ark and looked and saw that the ground was dry. Um, I haven't got confirmation yet, but um, the 28th was supposed to be uh, Nissan 1 if they spotted the moon. If not, it'd be the 29th. So that means today or tomorrow is uh, Nissan 1. Okay, which is awesome. So now we've got, I want you to go to Matthew 24, 34. It says, truly, truly, I tell you this generation will not pass away until all these things be fulfilled. Okay, and we know that a generation is 70 years. Okay, but God is also start talking about how there is generation of 100 because you got the 40 years uh, plus the, you know, the other 30 of captivity and things which equal up to the 70. And then you've got the other 30 that equals to 100, which is a whole nother Bible study. So you've got the 70 and the 100 and the 100 years um, from, uh, from 1906 or 1896, you know, event that there, it's been a hundred years and it leads to the year 2017. Okay, now we've got uh, the 70 years, which is Shava Oats, uh, May 31st to June 1st, which is Feast of Weeks, okay, um, which is the 70 generation. Now, we know that it's going to be after the 69, but before the 70, don't know the day or hour. But this is what has been led. And then it says, Matthew 24, 37, But as the days of Noah were, okay, as the days of Noah, okay, didn't, didn't you just see? The first month, first day, the ark, the was, it was uncovered, okay, which means what was hidden was revealed. Okay, now it says, that, that so shall be the coming of the Son of Man, which is Jesus. For as in the days before the flood, okay, and Noah was in the ark seven days prior to the flood's coming, right? Which it was, I can actually tell you right here, it was the second month, 17th day of the month, okay, um, would be, uh, when the rains came. Okay. And he was in the ark seven days prior to that. Okay. So it's, it's around this time. And when I spoke of my last study about the latter rain and the former rain, latter literally is April through May. Okay. In April is Passover, May is Shuv Shuvat, Shavuot, excuse me. Okay, which is, you know, the Feast of Weeks. Now, um, 
if you go to Matthew 24, 3, it says, Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us when these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And what is the end of the age represents in the Strong's? The church age. Who is the church? The bride of Christ. Okay. That's us. The one, the watchman watching and waiting. First Thessalonians 5, 1 through 3. But concerning the times, concerning the hour and the season, which is the time. Brethren, which means Christians, you have no reason that I write to you, that I speak to you, for you yourselves know exactly, okay, that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night, okay, when the time, when people are weary, when they get weary and get drunken and give themselves up to sleep, okay, um, when do people get drunk? At festivals, holidays. Um, that's the main time that they party, right? Now, it says, for when they say, okay, quietness, security of the Messiah's peace, and safe from danger and all the enemies, then unexpected punishment will come upon them like a woman in labor. Like birth pains. And doesn't the Bible say that the birth pains that which they will have is in this chosen generation and therefore that must come at before the, the generation ends. Okay? And then you, you got verse 4. It says, but you, brethren, you Christians, are not in total blindness without understanding that the present day of the end of the church age should overtake you like a thief therefore we know exactly the timing yes therefore we can know the year yes therefore we are given from jesus's mouth himself the timing of his return now it says and mark 13 20 and unless the lord had shortened which is taken away those days, okay, pruned them of the last day of the present church age, no man could be delivered from God's wrath except for the chosen. And he has sh taken away those days. Truly and faithfully, I say to this generation that this generation, this time period will not pass away until all these things have been done which is talking about the rapture of the church you understand me okay get on fire for the lord because the study is just amazing okay mark 14 1 talks about um two days after the passover and passover means pass over it means feast of wine drunkenness but it also means to spring over and passovers in our springtime okay and it's like you're leaping over right what would we spring into we would be springing into the heavens okay now passover is from nisan 14 through the 20th which is the first month of the year which is considered the latter rains woo Okay, um, and the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, which is the union of Christ. <sighs> okay, we are the body of Christ. Okay, we will become one with Christ. Okay, once again, we are right now spiritually with him, but we are also still in the flesh. So therefore, our soul is in the heavens, but our flesh is here. So we're still in the midst before our body goes whoop and we're gone completely 100% with him made new and 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 it says um that okay on and and it's talking about how Jesus when he remember when he was uh, speaking and they wanted to arrest him and stone him but what what did they say in verse 2 they said but they said not on the feast okay now on passover lest there be an uproar or a tumult, a breach of public order of the people. Which means that if an event occurs, 
on a holiday, like say Christmas time or something, the people are going to be in uproar, okay? There's going to be so much mad chaos, right? So what they're trying to do is keep it as peaceful as they can as possible. And when it's when it's at that peace time um, like that, they're able to keep everything in order. Okay, and then it says in verse 8, Jesus' words specifically says, She has done what she could. Okay, she has come beforehand, which is in an advance or a surprise to anoint and apply my body to the burying. Okay, which we have come beforehand, right? In which he did. He, he, um, you know, his, he was sent to earth. And his disciples had to get all of the the um the Passover stuff ready, and he sent them up to the upper room and you know and then therefore he met them there, okay, so they were sent up into the upper room um to get everything ready, and then that's when Jesus met them there, okay so it, it's a s signal of us, and then he said he said that he will not right here. The master saith, where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with? And he shall show you a large upper room furnished and prepared, which will make us ready. For I say unto you, I will no longer drink of the fruit, which means assuredly, this is from Jesus' mouth. I say to you, I will no longer nourish the generation of the vine. Okay, until that day, I nourish it and make it new in the kingdom of God. We are that new wine that which he made. He, he changed us. He made us uh, new. So when the covenant, that, that's, that's what he means when he says that he's going to, he's not going to drink, drink of the, of, of the vine, of the generation, because this is the chosen generation. You see, um, all right, so um, now I am going to continue this on my next video. Okay, thank you. Good morning, guys. Okay, so I wanted to do a continuance of my Bible study. Um, so, and I also had an amazing dream last night. I just woke up from actually, but I want to do this Bible study first before I get the dream out. Okay, so... Um, John Boucher, Watchman for that great day, calls me, and he's over here telling me about what was revealed to him, right? Well, I ended up getting, <clears throat> excuse me, once he started explaining things to me, I got um, some scriptures to go along with his and stuff, and I just wanted to do a quick run around through it um, <laughs> to confirm the times. And it says, and John 1, um, talking about how... Um, you know, Jesus was, the Word was, the Word is, and the Word will always be. Um, he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made. That was made, okay? In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Okay? Um, <clears throat> and it says, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. That's, that's like, um, we are the light because we have complete understanding of what's going on in these times. But yet, um, the the ones who are not for Christ completely don't understand these times at all. So they are left in darkness like I can't see. Um, so then you'd go on and skip over to verse 29. It says, the next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. As John said, this would be day one that which he starts his ministry um and verse 31 i did not know him but that sh that he should be revealed to israel therefore i came baptizing with water mean that uh, he, jesus came to reveal himself so that they can be um show himself to uh, the israelites so that they can believe Skip down to verse 35. <clears throat> it says, Again the next day John stood with his two disciples looking at Jesus, and he walked and he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Right? And then um, that was day two. 
you can continue reading uh go to first 39 it's talking about um how you know he re jesus remained with them um until the 10th hour which is about 4 p.m fourth watch um um on the second day and then he ended up meeting up with his brothers and uh everything like that and then um it says we have found the messiah which is translated to christ and he brought him to jesus now, when Jesus looked at him, he said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated a stone. And Jonah is very biblical, prophetic, um, because of the three days of the belly. You know, how Jonah was in the uh, belly of the fish for three days and three nights. And then he was spit up, thrown out to continue on his ministry similar to Christ because that's when Christ started you know he was on the earth for 40 days after he rose from the grave um, and then you keep going down and it says verse 43 the following day Jesus wanted to go to Galilee and he found Philip and said come with me that's day three okay and then he found Nathaniel we found him whom Moses is the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him. He said, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no deceit. Um, this is talking about the third day that which um, they were all pulled together. They they were, it was the, the okay, putting them to get, wait, let me let me read 48. It says, And Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Okay, this generation is the generation of the fig tree. Okay, and we were referred to, you know, because Israel is considered the fig tree. Okay, that is the generation. Okay, the wars and everything, the persecution and things that which are going on right now over in the Middle East, over in that area. That is why it's so important that we keep our eye um, over there um, with them because they are the sign that which will be given, you know, also to Christ's return. Now, um, we're still in the third day, okay? And then you go down to verse 51. He says, Most assuredly, I say to you, hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. So that's like a rapture form right there, specifically talking about that. Now, listen to this, okay? Which, you know, it's talking about how... Um, he was risen and how he started a ministry on Nisan 1. That is what John found out. And it's very interesting because um, he's got where, you know, he wanted to know how far it was from when they went, I believe it was to Cana um, or to Capernaum and to Galilee or whatever it was. He explains that. Oh, Cana, yeah, to Galilee. It was like 85 miles, and I used to walk 20 miles a day, so that took me about two and a half hours, but back then you had a group of people, some were slower than others, plus, you know, they rode in on a donkey, the donkey would get tired, he'd get hungry, you know, and they made pit stops along the way, so it could have been a three, four day journey for them. Now you keep going down, and it says in chapter two, it says, on the third day, there was a wedding in Canaan of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. How awesome is that? The third day. Okay, and um, and when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. Okay, and there's many, many, many other verses that go along with four, like uh, John 19, 26, 2 Samuel 16, 10, John 7, 6, 8 and 30 and 8 20 <sighs> okay and and then um his hour hadn't come yet because at that time um he wasn't able to uh, do anything he he was going to perform this miracle as a sign like he did before like the dying the the being on the grave but his real miracle started after he was risen correct 
Okay, and that's when people started believing. Now you go down uh, to verse 9. Um, actually, I'm just, okay, it's talking about filling up uh, the pitcher of water, um, making everything purified, six water pots, okay, oh my gosh, I, this is awesome. And then they drew out some water, and they took it to the master of the feast, and he took it. When the master of the feast has tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from, but the servants had drawn the water out, they knew that the master of the feast he called the bridegroom. Okay, we are the new wine. We are the covenant, okay, that is made when, <clears throat> excuse me, for this, this Passover, okay? And remember what I've said, um, what scripture tells us, excuse me, it says that he shall not what? Eat or drink of the, right here in verse 25 of Mark. <clears throat> Remember, it said, Assuredly, I say to you, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until that day I drink eternally in it new in the kingdom of God. Okay. When we get raptured, we will become made new. Okay. Jesus performed this miracle as a transformation of showing us what is to come. Okay, and for it to be on a wedding on the third day. Okay, now listen, you, you go down and it says, And he said to him, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine. And when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior, you have kept the good wine until now. Okay, all of us are, when we're born... We have Christ instilled in us. We have to learn, right? So when we become uh, one with God, we have, we are the good wine. We are, you know, we're the good wine that doesn't spoil, that doesn't go bad, that doesn't run out. And when, you know, you we are watching and waiting and being a watchman and we get pulled out of this world, separated from this world because, like I said, our, our flesh is here but our soul is there so it's like a tugging when he gets ready to take us all of it will be made new okay so we're part way transformed um that's why he says you got to be body mind and soul ready okay and then it says this is the beginning of signs jesus did in cana of galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed him Huh. So, and then it says, after this, he went down to Capernaum. He, his mother, his brothers, his disciples, and they did not stay there many days. Many days could be three or four days. So that would be about six days. Um, and we know the Passover is about seven days. Okay. Which, if it began on Nisan 1, we'd probably be about the 6th through, what, the 10th? And then it says, now the Passover of the Jews was at hand and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and he found in the temple those who sold oxen, sheep, doves and the, and the money changers doing business. Okay. When he had made a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and oxen and he poured out the changers money and overturned the tables. And he said to those who sold doves, take these things away. Do not make my father's house uh, a house of merchandise. That is flat out talking about the rapture and the financial collapse that which is to come. When when Jesus comes back to take his bride, everything's going to be flipped over. All those people, um, the, the government officials, everything that has taken Christ away, that has... Um, done things, made the temple of Baal, they put their money to bad use, to go against the holy word of God, everything's going to change. The money, you, you can throw all your stuff in the street and it still ain't going to change the wrath that which God is going to pour out, right? And then, um, you, you skip down to verse 19, it says, excuse me, 18, it says, so the Jews answered and said to him, What sign do you show us since you do these things? Okay, Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Okay.
Well, <laughs> okay, verse 23, it says, Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, during the feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs which he did. What sign is that? He's already made, what? The water turn into new wine. Okay? Being transformed. And he said, in three days, I will raise you up. Okay? I don't know the day or hour. I know we're, we're very, 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 very close. And I want to take you over here to these few scriptures here. Okay? In Deuteronomy 16. And these are just amazing. It's, it's, um, it says, um, observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover to the Lord your God for in the month of Abib, the Lord your God brought you out of Egypt by night. <sighs> Ooh, this is just powerful. Observe the month of Abib. What month is that? Passover. March to April, the month of Abib. Okay, right? The 28th, first month. Going all the way to around the 19th, 20th of next month. It's it's the new month. There's 29 days in a lunar calendar. So, okay. Oh, my gosh. Um, I'm running out of time. I'm going to continue this on my next video. Um, so, bear with me, please. Oh, I'm back. Okay, so... Um, I want you to skip down to verse 2. It says, Therefore you shall sacrifice the Passover to the Lord your God from the flock and the herd in the place where the Lord chooses to put his name. Okay, we are part of that flock and herd. Okay, what is the sacrifice that which we are giving to the Lord? We gave up our soul. We gave up our time. We gave up everything for the Lord. He turned the water, okay? We considered that water into wine, okay? And, and there were six water pots, remember? Six. And six is a powerful number because on seven it's rest, and there was one, okay? Um, I'm trying to put this in layman's terms so people can understand us, okay? And it says, you shall eat no leavened bread with it. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread with it, that is the bread of affliction. For you came out of the land of Egypt in haste, that you may remember the day in which you came out of the land of Egypt all the days of your life. Okay, seven whole days you are to be pure. You're not supposed to have any leaven in your bread, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and the affliction that which, that seven stands for the tribulation. The seven-year tribulation. Okay, and, and I, um, you go, when it, when it says that, um, the, the afflictions, it's talking about the, the whole world that which is going to be, um, overtaken by this. Because what happened in Egypt, there was a plague, there was, um, um, there was the, the plague, there was the sense of, uh, <sighs> The, the miracles that happened with Moses, and eventually they all were brought out of Egypt, right? After the ninth plague, okay? And if you think about it, Jesus died in the ninth hour. So, anyways, the, the dark hours that which they were brought out of is symbolizing rapture time, okay? And then you verse go to verse 4, and it says, And no leaven shall be seen among you in all your territory for seven days, nor shall any of the meat which you sacrificed the first day at twilight remaining overnight until morning. Oh, how powerful is that? When Jesus comes, it said it's going to be like twilight. It's going to be at the twilight hours at the what? The twinkling of an eye. And then it, it, it's, um, <laughs> the, Ah, we've given up everything of this world to go to be with our Savior, okay? And and you and he says that you shall not pass over, you shall not sacrifice the Passover within any of your gates, which the Lord your God gives you, okay? Which, what did God give us? He gave us this earth, 
Didn't he? Okay, now it says, but at the place where the Lord your God chooses to make his name abide, which is talking about heaven, there shall be sacrifice the Passover at twilight at the going down of the sun at the time you came out of Egypt. Okay, and you shall roast and eat in the place which the Lord your God chooses. And in the morning, you shall turn and go to your tents. Mm, 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 hallelujah, praise the Lord. Six days you shall eat unleavened bread. And on the seventh day, there shall be a sacred assembly to the Lord your God. You shall do no work on it. Do you understand what this means? This is saying six, we are, there's 6,000 years of man since Adam and Eve. Okay, we are in that six. Six, 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 okay? The seventh, that one whole time, okay, is the millennium, okay? But there's a seven-year tribulation prior to that, okay? Because there's the sixth, and then you've got the seven, okay? Once mankind, the Christians get raptured out. That's when the tribulation starts, and it's specifically said for six whole days, which is the 6,000th year. That whole seventh, we shall be with the Lord eating and dining at the wedding feast with him, okay? He's that Passover, okay? And he shall not pass by us again, all right, and then shortly after this, it says, you shall count seven weeks for yourself. Begin to count the seven weeks from the time you began to put the sickle to the grain. Then you shall keep the feast of weeks to the Lord your God with tribute of a free will offering from your hand, which you shall give as the Lord your God blesses you. Okay, when Christ leaves, okay, there is going to be a remnant left. That is going to believe. Okay? Remember what... It's... it's ex I got to go to the book of Jonah to explain this part. Okay? So, let me let me go here. Okay? Um, we, we shall rejoice with the Lord our God. The Feast of Weeks is Shavuot, which is May 31st, June 1st of this year. The 70th. We've had 69 of them. It will make the 70th. And the 70th year is the end of... Of the generation. The end. And Jesus said that all these things will be fulfilled before the end of the generation. Okay. And if he's talking about us being the sacrifice. Or us being the sacrifice. Jesus being the sacrifice. And us being made into new wine. And he will drink the new wine in his place that he chooses. Therefore we get raptured and be with him. By the timing of the Passover. Okay. Because we are the symbolized. The the the. Okay. <sighs> You shall rejoice before the Lord your God. You, your son, your daughter, your male servant, your female servants, the Levite who is within your gates, the stranger, the father, fatherless, the widow who are among you, and at the place your Lord God chooses to make you abide. And you shall remember that you were a slave in Egypt, and you shall be careful to observe these statutes. Okay, when the tribulation happens and they see us leave, Okay, many of those who were lukewarm will believe, okay? And then that's by the timing of the Feast of Weeks, okay? And then the next feast they're talking about is the Feast of the Tabernacles, and they said you have to be careful to observe it. And they have to be careful because the Word of God is going to be taken away, and things are going to be in turmoil. They are going to be disastrous and turned around. This will be a test so they can be refined, okay, in, into... The, the new covenant with the Lord. Because God says that you will have to prove your love to me. And that is why they are continuing to be a slave. But at the end, when they get brought out, they will remember that they were a slave to this world. That they, 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 and it says of a free will, they chose by shavuot oats to do their will. Am I saying 100%? No, I'm not. But I'm telling you, this is what scripture says. And this is not of my own understanding. Whoa, the Lord God is coming. He is coming for a spotless, pure, ready bride. 
He's not looking for looks. He's not looking for people without makeup. He's not looking for people with a job. He's not even looking for those who are black, white, purple, orange. It doesn't matter. Jesus is coming for people who love him, who gave up their life, who are ready for him, who are ready, who have taken the Passover and sat there. What In uh, John 8, let me go back here real quick. It says, hold on, where am I at? John 8. Okay, hold on. Uh, da, 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 da. Hold on. Um... Uh, he ended up, maybe it's John 7. Well, anyways, it, it, it doesn't matter. It's in John 7 or 8. I can't find it right now. I ain't got my glasses on. That when Jesus goes to this Passover, he chose two out of, oh, actually it's in Mark 14. And I have it right here. Okay. Um, Alright, so. Remember? On this group here. How I was saying. Um, about the Passover. Okay, in three days we would rise. Alright, Passover is from Nisan 14 through the 20th. Okay. And if we're already at Nisan 1. And it took Jesus roughly about 10 days before his ministry ended and to get where he was supposed to go, you know, for and it was before the Passover, the scripture would speak it. Because if you go to Mark 14, it talks about in verse 1 how, uh, you, you know, that um, they wanted to stone him, they wanted to arrest him, they wanted to try and get rid of Jesus, but uh, they said, not on the feast, which is the appointed time, lest there be a breach of public order of the people. Okay, we know that um, New World Order is going to come in effect as soon as the rapture happens. But there's scripture talking about how there's going to be a 30-day silence. Therefore, if we are taken by Passover, that leaves exactly one month, not only to shovel oats, but it leaves them one month where the U.S. Assembly, where, 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 um, <clears throat> Mr. Trump, the president, can move the U.S. Assembly. He can't touch it until then, which was exactly six months that Obama signed that executive order. Okay? Okay? Oh my gosh, this is just, ooh, so awesome. Okay? And that would leave them that timing, uh, just enough time to get the world back in order to fulfill prophecy to make an end remember what god said he was going to make an end so therefore the tribulation does not start immediately when the rapture happens because there has to be order okay and then when the 70th year starts that's when tribulation because that is the time of jacob's trouble and that is specifically from jesus's mouth okay now i want you guys <clears throat> to turn to jonah oh my gosh I don't even know if I even read this to you guys in my other video, but if I did, I'm repeating it because I want to get this through you guys' heads. You guys have got to understand that these timings, you, you cannot make up the generation. God, Jesus told us the fig tree timing. He told us who the generation is, what the generation is. He told us in Daniel 9, 24, 25, 26, 27, the timing. He told us in Mark 14. He told us about the Passover. He told us who the Passover was. He told us who the new wine was. It's all there. Plain as day. And he specifically said that there will be those who are blinded who shall not understand. But those with ears, those with eyes who can hear and understand and have that spiritual understanding. No need I write to you because you already know. Okay, you ready to get fired up for the Lord? Because I am. And I believe I did read this. But Jonah is the sign. Okay. Oh, maybe I didn't read this to you. So Jonah. Three days in the belly of a fish. What did he do? He tried running from God, just like Israel's doing. He's running from God. And actually, the rest of the world, you might as well say. So we get captivated. Whoop! Jesus came, right? Three days. Three nights in the in the belly. Whoop! He got thrown out. Boom! From that time, he walked the earth for 40 days to show his miracles. Jesus, or Jesus, God gave him 
40 days for Nineveh. From that second that he got spit out, he immediately got up off that sand and walked his behind into the city and said, in 40 days, destruction shall come. And the only way that these people within that 40 days could have relented is by what? Fire, hail, and brimstone, lest it turn to Sodom and Gomorrah. That is what the Lord their God has said. That is what my God has said. And I'm going to continue this video on the next video. It says, by fire, hail, and brimstone, okay, that these, this, that is the sign, right? Is when, if you don't repent and you don't relent, it will be destroyed as the days of Noah and Lot, okay? The floods, um, the asteroids, okay? And we've got Planet X, and through Planet X, we've already got all the, the shifting of the earth. We've got the dizzy spells. We've got, you, you know, the chemtrails going, trying to blind us and people going chaotic and remember i posted that dream about how i saw all these people going crazy from the sprays and but it didn't affect me and that's why i was hiding me and my husband was sitting on toilet yeah well that's exactly what's going on that was a prophecy that which was given to me okay through the Holy Spirit. And like I said, you cannot make this stuff up. There is a God and he is coming and he's coming with this timing. This is the timing. You cannot deny this. You can't. And we're in the midst of the Jubilee year. I mean, I just, I wish you people would just wake up and realize that Jesus loves you. He doesn't want anyone to perish, but Okay, you can be like this, okay? When we get raptured out, there is going to be so much mad chaos, okay? But there's going to be a time of revival. I can't remember what scripture it's in. I want to say it's in the New Testament in between Matthew and John. Um, I know a couple other people who have spoken of this and showed it to me. I just can't remember where it is right this second. But um, it, they will have a huge revival, when we leave okay and that is the refining um when you know because they're going to see the signs they're going to see that oh wow the lord our god gave us all these signs and we missed it because we were asleep okay um but okay so then going back to the jonah so he goes into the city and cries hey in 40 days blah 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 this is going to be overthrown and destroyed Okay, but it says, then the word of the Lord came to the king in verse 6 of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne and laid aside his robe. Okay, he laid aside his robe, the kings of the earth, and covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes. Why would he sit in ashes? Because of the asteroids, asteroids and or fire causes ashes. Earthquakes shall cause ashes ashes through volcanic material all of that the earth roaring right but he didn't destroy them he said let neither man or excuse me in verse 7 and he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his noble saying let neither man nor beast herd nor flock taste anything do not let them eat or drink water okay Wonder why that is. Because wormwood in the book of Revelation has been spoken of. It means bitterness. It's bitter root. You don't want to eat from it and you surely don't want to drink of it. Okay? And it says, But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. Yes, let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we shall not perish? So this timing, by the end of the 40 days, they have all repented because they knew that, G that this was the hand of God. All these signs that which he was given from the heavens, the, the earthquakes, the volcanic activity, the, 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 the asteroid, because that is the sign of Jonah, the planet X. Okay, that is the exact same sign that which they were given. And that's the same sign we're given now. The difference is people right now don't want to see it. You have to see it visibly with the telescope. Back then it was a visible sign. Okay, because remember the first shall be the last and the last shall be the first. So everything that was written before shall come to pass again. Only we are a different generation because we have more technology. 
Okay, we have more understanding. But yet back then they needed those signs because they didn't have phones. They didn't have internet. They didn't have communication like we have. They strictly had to go off faith. So we are that lucky generation that is getting to choose whether we believe or whether we not. Okay, so then you go down to verse 10 and it says, Then God saw their works that they turned from their evil ways. And God relented from the disaster that he had said he would bring upon them. And he did not do it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Wow, how powerful that is. Now, I am going to tell you this dream I had last night. And this is confirmation. And I have not had a dream in so long. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray that this opens up people's eyes, people's hearts, Lord Jesus, to have them turn to you, knock the blinders that which is upon them. Oh God, take them away. Father God, for you are merciful. You are loving. You are kind as the days of Noah, as the days of Lot, as the days of Jonah. That is our sign, Lord Jesus, that you are coming and out of the midst, out of the darkness, you shall pull us in to be that new wine and we shall dine with you forevermore. I just pray, Father God, that this is not of my own understanding, Lord Jesus, that they will wake up and they will study and realize that the time is at hand, Lord Jesus. The Passover is is April, April 11th. April 10th, April 11th, Lord Jesus, and we are a few days in, Father God. I just pray, Father God, for, for your Holy Spirit to reign within them and that you will ignite a fire, Father God, and may the Holy Spirit Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, you are merciful, you are loving, you are kind, and as you have spoken to me, disaster is about to fall upon the land before the floods. Father God, we are taken, and that is why you have given me this dream. Thank you for the confirmation in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I plead the blood of Jesus over these and that they will have complete understanding in Jesus name. Amen. I dreamt last night that I it was pitch black outside and I walked into this restaurant and I want to say it was a McDonald's or a Burger King of some sort. And when I went in there, all these people were so afraid and I said, what is the problem? And I said, there's a tornado. And he said, yes, I need a safe place for these people to go. And I said, well, the bathroom is too small. They cannot go. So I kept looking and I said, what about under the tables? And they said, no, the tables shall be overturned. <sighs> Can you believe that? The tables are going to be overturned. As Jesus said. <laughs> okay. And then after that, there was a major flood that occurred. Okay, <laughs> and they said that if you get in the water, it's going to sweep you away, and it can't sweep me away, oh, because the current was so strong, and I remember trying to swim away from it, and I just couldn't swim away from it, because it kept trying to take me, and this lady, I saw this big white vehicle, my video suddenly just overcame so then I ended up having where I came and I, I there was this white vehicle and I remember the back opened and the ceiling was coming down like this and it was flooded and I pushed my feet up to try and hold it and this lady said no yes let me be the sacrifice let me do it so we could save all these people and all these floods of people kept coming out and guess what who came to the rescue a helicopter from high, and we were lifted up high, symbolizing the rapture. Jesus is coming. And I know that I didn't tell all my dream, because I have company that just shortly showed up. But I am ecstatic. 
You guys have got to pray over this. Accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Believe that he died for you and rose again so you can be a part of the Passover lamb. Okay, give your life to Christ because there's not promise tomorrow. Okay, we are that generation. And this is confirmation. Jonah is that sign. Jo J uh, uh, Noah is that sign. Lot is that sign. We're going home. Okay, God bless you all and pray over this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.